What's up, math scholars and math haters? This is Mr. W. Today we're going to tackle question three in the math three questions that North Carolina released this past school year. The question tells us that the graph of this function has a zero at negative one, and we're trying to find the other two zeros of the function. The big skills that this question is going to test are your ability to divide polynomials, and my favorite way to do this is synthetic division. And then also, the quadratic formula is going to be the most useful way to solve the last part of this question. So let's go ahead and get started by setting up our synthetic division um, frame for this polynomial to test the 0 at negative 1. Now on this top row, I'm going to write all the coefficients of my polynomial. Even if there's not a coefficient in front of x cubed, I'm going to say that that's 1. So that's 1, 3, negative 2, negative 4. I'm testing negative 1. And so now I need to pull out my zigzag, where everywhere that I'm going down a column, I'm adding. So 1 plus nothing is 1. And now everywhere I'm multiplying, or everywhere I'm going diagonal, I'm multiplying by negative 1, by this number that I'm testing. So 1 times negative 1 is just negative 1. I add down my column, and 3 plus negative 1 is positive 2. I come over to my, or I go diagonal and I multiply by negative 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2. Negative 2 plus negative 2 is negative 4. I come up here and I get, um, and when I multiply negative 4 by negative 1, I get positive 4. And now negative 4 plus 4 equals 0. So what this tells me, since I've gotten 0 here, what I'm looking for are the zeros from the quadratic with these three numbers as coefficients. So essentially, I'm now looking at 1x squared plus 2x minus 4. And it's at this point that the quadratic formula is going to be extremely useful. And if you remember, the quadratic formula is whenever um, this equals 0, we can find our zeros by doing negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a, where the imaginary 1 in front of x squared is my a, 2 is my b, and then negative 4 is my c. So the first thing I'm going to do is go ahead and plug all those numbers into the quadratic formula. Actually, for the sake of space, just use an eraser for this and plug them in right here. So negative b becomes negative 2. Inside the square root, b squared becomes 2 squared. And then minus 4ac becomes minus 4 times 1 times negative 4. And this is all over. Now instead of 2a, it's going to be 2 times 1. First big thing I want to do is figure out the stuff inside my square root. So this is going to be um, 2 squared is 4. 4 times 1 times negative 4 is negative 16. Two negatives make a positive, and this gets me the square root of 4 plus 16, which is the square root of 20. So now this becomes negative 2 plus or minus the square root of 20 all over 2. I'm going to do something a little um, strange to the square root of 20. I'm going to recall that it's actually the square root of 5 times 4. And I'm actually going to be able to pull this 4 out of here, pull it out of the square root, and turn it into its square root, which is 2. So now I have negative 2 plus or minus 2 root 5 all divided by 2. And at this point, I'm going to pull out the trick that I learned, which is like triangle division. Essentially, I figure out negative 2 divided by 2, which is negative 1. This is going to be plus or minus, and then I figure out 2 divided by 2, which is 1. So 1 times the square root of 5 is just the square root of 5. So now that I know my other two zeros after all that work, I come over to my answer choices, and choice C matches exactly what I got from all that work.